I hope you're doing well today. Let me see if I'm live. I think I am. Yep. Um, let's pray. Father, I praise you and give you all the honor and the glory and I just pray that you will be praised in a wonderful way today. Lord, I pray that as I talk about this difficult subject that you, your words from heaven will come out of my mouth. Um, I pray that this video will start conversations and um, all, all of that. Speak to me, speak through me, in the name of Jesus, amen. Uh, hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm so glad that, to be with you. Um, I read um, an interesting book recently. For First of all, before I get into that, for those of you who don't know, and for those of you who are readers, I ha I have um, I have a book suggestion group called Rachel's Reads, um, where where I put almost everything I've read, where I post almost everything I've read. Some of it I liked, some of it I absolutely loved. So if you're if you're curious, the book, the the group is called Rachel's Reads and I try and post like every day or whenever I finish reading a book I try and po post the Kindle version of the book. And one of the books I posted recently is called The Hate You Give. And what basically it's about, it's about um, this black girl. She lives in the hood with her family, with her uh, two brothers. And... Um, with her, you know, with her family. So one night she's at a party and she sees a friend that she hasn't seen in a while. And that, at that party, um, there happens to be like some gun violence going down. And so they leave the party to escape gun violence. They're stopped by the police and the friend uh, gets killed. And uh, throughout this book, um, it's just basically her trying to deal with her friend's death. And at the end of the book, um, um, her her father's store gets burned down and I I'm so ambivalent about this book um like I like it it was well written um I think it was true to life it was real but it kind of left me um feeling hopeless, like, how are we going to change things, um, and things cannot be changed, it did make me feel uncomfortable, really, but it, it made me feel kind of hopeless, that if this is what we're, uh, perpetuating, how is it ever going to change? And I know that racism is a big deal and it's probably never going to go away entirely because that, that's human beings and sometimes human beings could be selfish and stupid. But it can be greatly diminished, I believe, if we start looking at our community as, as 
as in the Cuban community, not as in racial divides. Often, when we say this is what's going on in our community, we either mean our neighborhood, our cultural community, and, you know, things like that. But I think I was thinking to myself, I said, Lord, how do we begin to untangle or greatly diminish this racial thing? And he said to me, we need, we need as a society to um, to start looking at our community as the human community, uh, not as a cultural thing, not as cultural divide, but as human human divides. And I think that uh, for too long, for generations. We, we as, um, we as, uh, black people have lived under this false, um, assumption that, that we are, that it'll just be this way and it'll just always exist. And I'm not saying it won't and then we can all sing Kumbaya. I'm saying that it doesn't have to be this way and I know and I know you're saying what am I talking about but when I go back to the word it said the Lord said in Matthew chapter 17 he said I am praying that they all may be one and I don't think it just means um, Christian denominationalism although it does mean that too but I think I think what he wants most of all is for the world at large the world that he so loved and gave Jesus for to be one and I think when we see ourselves not as um, when we see our community as in the human community with different cultures in it and begin to celebrate those cultures not to say that I don't see color or I don't see your differences I don't see your culture um, but to see it and to celebrate it I think that's when change will come as I was listening, because I uh, listen to audiobooks because it's hard for me to hold the book. As I was listening to this book, I was like, oh my gosh, it has all the typical things that, that black books have. It has violence, it has the church scene, it has, um, it has all, it has gun violence, it has the token white person that is um, made out to be stupid and it just it just, I love the book but it it says how 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 far back we are like about um, uh, these issues how we are still perpetuating the same nonsense in 2017 as we are in 2020 as we did in the 60s somebody needs to break the cycle somebody needs to stand up and say this is wrong this is wrong we don't we we don't have to like just deal with gang violence. We don't have to deal with people dying in the streets. We don't have to deal with that. We can change it. And we don't change it by looting. We don't change it by stealing. We don't change it by joining a gang. 
we change it by our voice and discussion. Um, when, George, when George Floyd was murdered, it did two things. It, there was an outcry of black people and white people um, and, and all the human community just in an uproar, but it died down, and, and since then there have been mass, there have been shootings of uh, black people, and nobody said anything. So, it, the conversation cannot stop, and there is a way to change it, because I was saying to myself last night, God didn't start it. Humans started it. So if humans started it, humans can change it. It can change. We just need to start seeing ourselves as the human community and not and not the the um the black community and the white community and the Indian community and all that. We need to start seeing ourselves as one human family. So if someone from the Latino community cannot get a job, that, that means that we all can't get a job. If someone from the white community gets divorced, that means we all get divorced. If someone from the black community gets gunned down, it means it affects us all. And I think we need to start seeing ourselves as the human community, not the black community, not the white community, but at the same time as we see ourselves as the human community, we can celebrate our cultural differences. Because there are things that the black culture does that are really great, and there are things that the Asian culture does that is really, really interesting. There are things that Latino culture does that's really interesting. That there are things that the white community does that are really interesting, but we don't we don't see those good things because we're too focused on well. I'm black, and he's white, and it's like, we've got these stereo stupid stereotypes in our heads that don't make any sense, and we put them in literature, we, we celebrate them, we, we do all this. Somebody needs to stay, say, no, this needs to stop. I would like to see, um just uh, more black movies that don't perpetuate the stereotypes that not every um that doesn't have uh, a token church service in it with gang members and lots of f words and all that like i actually hallmark does have like one or two movies but i would love to see more where the person of color, it could be any person. It could be, like, the female role could be a white person or a black person. Uh, or the, um, the male role could be a white person or a black person. And the villain is a white person or a black person or an Indian person. That's what I... I want to break all these cultural norms. Like I want to, I want to see uh, Native uh, First Nations people come to screen, not in, not in their usual, not in the garb that we see, but just wearing the regular clothes and dealing with a regular life. And like I want to see like interracial people uh, falling in love in, in a great way and I just want to break all these cycles because I'm, I'm tired of reading uh, um, 
books with Caucasian people that are things are so sweet and wonderful, and then I read love stories with black people, and they all have gang members and and shootings and killings. I'm tired of it. There needs to be someone that says no. This is not right. This is not the way it has to be. And we don't have to settle for this as a society. And we don't. Because you know why? God didn't start this. We as humans started it. So that means we as a human family can change it. Um... I don't know if you re- remember uh, the uh, um, shooting at the gay club. Um, no, sorry, not gay club. LGBT club at, in, I think it was Vegas or something. Oh, it wasn't Vegas. It was something else. Um, it was somewhere else. But I cried um, when that happened. You know why? Because people lost their lives. People having fun and whatever got shot. That's why I cried. I didn't cry because they were gay or whatever. That's not why they... it. It offended me. I'm not a part of the LGBT community, but it offended me because they were human. They were just out for some fun, and then they got shot. Same thing with George Floyd. Like, I didn't cry because he was black. Not really. I cried because the police pulled pulled over a bit, sat on him, put put his knee in his neck with all his body weight until he died. I didn't cry because he was black. I cried because he was a human being. And I think when we start seeing the fact that you're human being first and your color or orientation, or the fact that you're a woman comes second, I think th- I, I think that's where it will begin to change. And we can learn from people. And yes, I believe that we can break this, the cycle of racism, sexism, um, uh, discrimination of all all types, but we just start needing to see each other as humans. And I think until we first see each other as humans, um, it's never going to change. It won't change. If we continue uh, to see each other only as black, white, Asian, Middle Eastern and and start to relate to each other on that level. I don't think we'll really see the greatness of a person because every every culture in itself has great things about it. Every culture has negative things about it. But I think we just need to uh, tear away the duck dividing lines a bit more, a lot more, and start first seeing each other as human. And then when I see your beautiful humanity, then I can then I can more receive what is different about your culture to me and enhance myself and learn from you and grow with you and grow from you. I think the the greatest thing we can do is see each other's humanity first, and then when we see each other's humanity and accept us first as human, 
rather than as a culture, then then we can bring the culture into it and grow with each other. But if we see each other as human first, we'll be like, oh, he's white, he's black, or I'm tired of the terms, oh, you're acting white or you're acting black. What does that mean? I'm acting like me. I'm acting like a person. Acting is not a color. It's just who I am as a person. It's how I grew up. And I shouldn't be penalized for how I grew up. If I didn't grow up talking like the hood, I shouldn't be penalized because I don't talk like that. Or, um, if I didn't grow up talking like an aristocrat, and I grew up in the Bronx in New York City, and, I, and I'm white, I shouldn't be expected to talk like an aristocrat. I'm just me. I'm not a color first. I'm a human being first, and everything else about me comes second. The fact that I'm... The fact that a person's gay, the fact that a person is white, the fact that a person is black, that all comes after them being human. We need to start seeing people as human, human first, and everything about, everything else about them, what, where they grew up, how, how they grew up whether they're light-skinned black or dark-skinned black or whatever, everything else should come after that. And I believe that that's what the Lord has called us to today. The Lord has called us to break the cycle of racism. The Lord has called us to change. The Lord has called us to love each other. And that means um, love doesn't mean agreement. Love means I embrace you despite the fact that I may disagree with you. We can all have disagreements, but we can still love each other despite our disagreements. And I believe that the Lord is calling for our human family to be one. So when, we, when one of us struggles, we all struggle. When my Jewish brothers struggle, I as a Christian struggle. When my Muslim brothers struggle, I as a Christian, I as a Christian struggle. When my gay brothers struggle, I, I as a Christian woman struggle. If we all be begin to see ourselves as God intended, as connected, that's when it'll it'll change. So when we see ourselves as human first, and um, that's when it'll change. I often see humanity as a mannequin. You know those mannequins in the store. I may have uh, done this in a sermon before. But, you know, those blank mannequins in the store um, that they that they put their clothes on and dress the mannequins up. Well, I often see hum humanity as that. Um, like, uh, the blank mannequin. Um, they look the same. They, you know... Are, are the same, you can put anything on them, but what you put on them makes them who they are. So they they come blank, but you can dress them in a scarf, or you can dress them in, you know, without a scarf and a hat. You can dress a mannequin in so many ways, and I believe that that's how, how we see each other. We're, we're blank mannequins when we come into this world, but we are, are dressed differently because of our background, because of where we grew up, because of what language we speak, 
we are dressed differently, and that adds to our uniqueness. But at the end of the day, uh, when you take everything off, whether I'm wearing a hat, whether I'm wearing a beanie, whether I'm wearing a baseball cap, you still see me as human, as a blank mannequin. And I think if we see each other first as human beings, we can, that's when it'll change. I was watching someone uh, a few months ago, and they kept saying, this person is black, and they kept saying, our community, our community, our community. And I sat back and thought, uh, isn't our community the human community that that we that we should that we all are a part of, and the and the dressing in our community is what's important. Uh, no, the dress. No, the dressing in our community, whether we're wearing a scarf or whether we're wearing a hat or whether we wear a dress, or a nice pantsuit, or sunglasses, or or regular glasses, or bifocals. Um, isn't that what counts? I think we need to change our lens from our community being white, or black, or whatever, to our community being the human community, and within that community, we have cultural differences. But I foresee you as my human brother and my human sister. So when you cry, I cry. When you get mad, I get mad. Injustice for you is injustice for me. And I think until we see each other as that, I think it'll be hard to change. And we could have have all the seminars, all the conversations that we want to have. But until we start seeing each other as human, I don't I don't see it changing. And until and until our like directors and and producers have the guts to rewrite the script, change the story break the cycle, bring things to screen that are unique, and, um, like, make a character just as a character. Like, the, the person could be either a white person or a black person. It doesn't matter, you know, until we can bring that in art or in painting or or to movies and to and to books um, then we'll we'll see change but if we continue to perpetuate the cycle it'll still keep going on and on and you won't and you won't eradicate it eradicate racism um, all the way, but you will greatly diminish it when, when we stand up and speak out and say, no, don't, th no, I won't accept that. And when we, when one thing, one thing hurts, one part of the human family, it should hurt us all. When one part of the human family can't get jobs, we all, sh it should be an uprising for us all. When one part of the fa family is dying and um, just, just in a mess, we're all dying and in a mess. But if we're just focused on, oh, my family's good, I'm good, it's never going to change. We need to, we need to hurt when one of us hurts.
we need to say this in the right because one of us is just hurting. And that's how we'll change this thing. So, guys, I will see you later. Bye. One love, one heart, let's get together and feel alright. One love, one heart, give thanks and praise to the Lord and it will be alright. Let's get together and and together, togetherness will take work. Togetherness will, will take stepping out of your comfort zone and learning about different cultures and asking questions about cultures. It will take open dialogue and communication and it will take a non-stop conversation. And I, I really hope that this sermon will start a conversation um, today about the new definition of our community. So guys, thank you so much for just hanging in with me today. It's just such a joy to do these things for you. Thanks so much.